La NBA siempre está cambiando figuritas. Hoy los muchachos juegan con una camiseta y mañana juegan con otra. El cierre del periodo de traspasos tuvo de todo, incluidas algunas bombas. Lo que también es una bomba, pero que no cambia nunca, es lo bueno que está nuestro programa. Porque hoy... Larry Nance Jr. ya no está en los Lakers, pero dejó un buen recuerdo y unas tremendas volcadas. Y claro, tiene a quien salir. Miami Heat ya se relame con la vuelta de Wade, pero antes juntamos a los muchachos que nos cuentan sus expectativas. Conocemos a Ish Smith, la pieza que utilizaron los Pistons para reparar su auto. Bajamos hasta el parque para acompañar a Frank Bogel, que nos cuenta cómo es vivir dando indicaciones. Agarramos el bate con Jared Allen, un invitado de lujo en la cancha de los Mets de la Liga de Béisbol. Y esta vez el seguimiento a Manu viene acompañado de elogios, elogios y más elogios de sus compañeros en una fecha muy especial. ¡Correte viejo! ¡Pero correte te digo! ¡Salí que ya arranca Generación NBA! El mejor básquet del mundo visto con ojos argentos. La visita a Oakland no era la mejor chance para recuperarse de dos caídas en los últimos tres partidos. Y los Warriors fueron culpables de que San Antonio continuara en la mala. Los Spurs jugaron un primer cuarto bárbaro y lo ganaron 37 a 27, pero luego se cayeron a pedazos. El equipo de Greg Popovich erró muchísimo de tres y los titulares de Golden State, liderados por Clay Thompson, hicieron lo que quisieron para ganarle a San Antonio 122 a 105. Manu completó un aceptable partido con 13 puntos y 6 asistencias en 19 minutos. Utah, que ya le había ganado unos días antes, volvió a golpear a los tejanos. San Antonio tuvo una actuación mejorada y Pau Gasol dijo presente ante la ausencia de la Marcus Aldrich, pero no alcanzó para evitar la caída 101 a 99. Esta vez Manu falló bastante, acertó apenas 30% de cancha. 20% de triples y erró la mitad de sus libres para terminar con 9 puntos en 22 minutos. La gira del rodeo continuó en Denver y San Antonio lo sufrió. Sumó su tercera derrota al hilo y la quinta en seis partidos al caer con los Nuggets 117 a 109. Otra vez el equipo jugó un último cuarto horrible que le permitió al rival llevarse la victoria. Geoffrey Lobern puso la cara por los de Pop con 26 puntos y 11 rebotes, pero Nikola Jokic fue demasiado del otro lado. 23 puntos, 13 rebotes y 11 asistencias del crack serbio. Ginobili poco pudo hacer y encima salió con dolores en un pie cuando quedaban 5 minutos para el final del tercer cuarto y no volvió a la cancha. Afortunadamente para él y para nosotros le hicieron estudios que descartaron problemas importantes y el general manager R.C. Buford dijo que estará en perfectas condiciones al regreso del receso por el All-Star Game. My game day attire is usually pretty chill. It uh, represents my mood going into the game. I can wear a suit one day, or I can wear something really stylish. 
simple yet extravagant is what I like to say. I might have something simple on, but there's always a kick to it. I keep it simple. I just want to be comfortable at the end of the day. That young man can play this game. He's a good player. Manu Ginobili in his sixth year out of Argentina at the age of 30. In February of 2008, Manu Ginobili scored a season-high 46 points against the Cavaliers in Cleveland. Nine years later, his stat still stands as the most points ever scored by a Spur during the rodeo road trip. I mean, you've got two players trying to get in front of him, and neither one can spatially figure out what in front of him means. He might be my favorite player all time now because he's, he's, he's so fun to, to play with as far as the game is uh, so much easier. You know, he finds the way to make these crazy passes, and when he makes the great passes, it's, it's unbelievable. I love playing with Manu. Uh, I think whether it's the style of play or, or um, understanding each other's games, it, it, he's someone that I really um, feed off of. He is one of the best and uh, a guy that, you know, in today's, in, in modern sports, a person that, that you know, is willing to come off the bench and, and thrives in his role. Um, with the amount of talent that he has and the amount of experience this isn't something you see very often in any sport. So he's to be commended for that, and, and obviously his play speaks for itself. He is single-handedly taking over this ball game in the pool. Yes, he sure is. I don't know. It's hard to choose like one moment, you know, because there's so many great moments and so many great years and so many championships and stuff like that. It's hard to just choose one, you know. And I just. I like to say that he was one of a kind, you know, uh, he's just a unique player. We feel honored and proud of being part of all this. So um, we want to keep it going for as long as we can. And at the same time, enjoying the ride, as I said before, and, and getting better. You know, I, I'm not going to play better than in 08. Uh, but at the same time, you can get better in other things. You can help your teammates in a different way. You can enjoy the game in a different way. And you can still be productive on helping uh, Kawhi become the, the best player he can be, or Danny, or uh, anybody. He's a great teammate, you know. Um, he tells you when you're um, not doing something right and um, teaches you about his, you know, off-court things that you could learn from. Um, he's just a good guy. I like him. He's a um, fierce competitor. I've always been a fan of his game, but you know, being here now and, and seeing how you know, he can really uh, change a team has been awesome for me. Just some timely, big time, big time rodeo road trip highlights for us here in Cleveland. During the team's recent trip to Mexico City this season, Coach Popovich couldn't help but laugh when asked his thoughts on number 20. Coach, uh, what do you think about the Manu Ginobili? What do I think about Manu Ginobili? <laughs> I think he's a Hall of Fame basketball player. Uh, he's been a beautiful person and a wonderful player. Don't shortcut. Now, that's where I want you to get better with your details. So as soon as you roll, where do you got to get? And get there, OK? Oh, every count matters. I guess you're being very intentional about the process of getting better. This is versus scout team, but be intentional about getting better. There's no real easy way to it. There's no shortcuts. What's our first fundamental? Chin it, chest it, you turn, you look. So hopefully we'll look different in March and April than, than we do now. I'm back. I got rim, I got rim, I got rim. Oh, I got the streak. Hey, oh yeah. Switch that. There you go. We want to be a mean, nasty team. We don't want people to come in here and think it's going to be easy. Oh. Yo. That's key culture. Like the culture here is rough. The culture here is tough. And nothing comes easy. My heart, heart, heart. That's it. We had a great group of guys. You know, tough group. You know, tough character. Guys that like to grind it out. You know, come to work every day. You know, with your hard hat and shovel. Hard, hard. Then just go to work. That's it. Yep, there we go. Good fundamental. We got a lot of guys who can play basketball here, and they play the right way. 
And when everybody knows their role on a team and fulfills their job, it makes the whole greater than the sum of its parts, and I think that's huge. Hand off this, hand off this. We feel that our depth is one of our best strengths. Swing it! But you have to have the right kind of guys that sacrifice, that are playing for one common goal, and go out there and compete. Work it, work it! Lock in, lock in! Go ahead, you, come on, come on! Cut hard! Violent cut! Coach Spo is more than a coach, he's like a life coach, you know, he's a motivational speaker. Everything's not gonna work A, B, C perfectly like how we diagram it in a playbook. He's been an unbelievable leader for us. There you go, good, good. He keeps everybody on the same page. Work it. He pushes us to be the best we can be every single day. Stay with it, stay with it. For me, he's been the most encouraging and most confident coach that I've played for. And that's good, I like it, I like it. That's why we're working on this. Push each other. For this team, we all had one common goal and we're all together. We call each other family and we, we mean it. It starts with everybody being together and buying all in. So it starts with friendship and then builds brotherhood. And, you know, from brotherhood, we can carry on. I think the sky's the limit, really, for us. When you believe in each other from the top down, you can do inspiring things. This is all about us getting better, all right? What do you got? Cash, Cash on three. Yeah, sure. One, two, three. Cash. I tell people all the time, you know, going from place to place to place to place, uh, you don't know, you got to switch up your game and switch up what that coach wants from you. Uh, but when you're with the same organization, the same coaching staff, the same players, do you get a little bit of a consistency. All this summer, I was working with, you know, Coach Hardaway, Tim Hardaway. And so when you got somebody in Tim who played the game who, shot one for 20 something one game and then the next game go for 30. Like that mental state and, and you know, getting that kind of confidence from him, what he's done and he's been there, uh, it means a lot, you know, obviously to me, to Reggie, to uh, Langston, to all the guards. Dish, daylight, scoop, score. Hey, you give him a gap like that, and he's still got the dribble alive coming towards you, he's going by you. I think how the game is played now today, everything is pace. You gotta play with great pace, a lot of cutting, a lot of movement. Uh, you know, the Lord has truly, truly blessed me with speed. And uh, so I feel like when God gives you a gift, you gotta use it. I had a high school coach, but we used to press the whole game. And so he used to be like, they might break the press the first, second quarter, third quarter, but fourth quarter, we're gonna break their wheel. And so that kind of like stuck with me from high school to college and until now, I just kind of keep going at you until eventually, eventually you're gonna get tired. And so I trust that my endurance is better than yours and it's all, you know, the game is all about will. If you're bigger and stronger, then you're probably gonna try to impose your physical will on me. And if I'm faster, then I'm gonna try to impose my speed on you. So it's just a game of wheels and, and you know, who can impose their will on the other team and the other player. I try to be positive in particular during games. Um, I tend to be harder on them in, in film sessions and practices. You know, I think you can kind of really get on a guy not worrying about if they're gonna lose confidence, uh, you know, in a practice or a film session. Once the game comes around, then it's, it's time to, hey, you gotta, you gotta teach them correct and you gotta, you know, point out things they can do better, but, you know, it's a time to, to lift you guys up and, and try to make them play as confident as possible. Go, Ben! Go, Ben! To these guys, get after them. Be smart. DJ, make sure Fareed's not running passes in transition. Be the first back every time. You know, when we go on a run, why did we go on a run? You know, hey, we're we're getting stops. You know, we're, we're moving the basketball. You know, we're not playing one on one. We're not playing for for ourselves. We're playing for each other. See the difference between those two plays, right? First one, Aaron just trailed him on his back. Second one, he got through it. 
Okay, and busts through it. Got himself back in front of the ball. You know, like I said, you try to uh, you try to teach and correct the things that they, they they need to do better. And sometimes you have to do it with some some fire. And um, but for the most part, you try to highlight the positives and and be positive and try to build their confidence. Since the middle of the second quarter, okay, we have not been able to stop that. We got to pick it up down here. Yeah, okay, we got to pick it up down here. We start forcing misses. The offensive end will get a lot easier for us. It's a little bit of a pressure-packed situation, and you know you got to get a, a lot of messages across in a short period of time. Uh, you don't want to overload them. You know sometimes it's best to come over and, and sit and let them discuss what's happening throughout the game. Give them give them a voice. Allow them to talk things out. That's that's one of the reasons why I huddle up with my coaches before going in to the timeout. It's not just to gather my thoughts, but it's a, it's an opportunity to give them a, a platform for player leadership. I'm going to give you a couple things here, okay? Let's get a bucket here, okay, and a stop in another bucket, and we got a game still. So, Keon, I still got one now in this quarter, right? You took yours, but anyway. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, what the trainers are responsible for is, first and foremost, they, they keep um, fouls and timeouts. They're, they're responsible for, for charting those. So, you know, every time a, a player gets in foul trouble, you know, he'll come over and tell us, hey, that's two on Alfred, that's three on Alfred. Pick up, pick up. No foul, no foul, no foul. You know, so you always have a, you know, a constant reminder of, of uh, you know, making sure that you're managing the foul situation the right way. And the other thing they're responsible for is is uh, timeouts. You know, they're just in my ears in terms of how many I've used, how many I have available. Any bigger ones? <laughs> oh, I could do that one. Like, damn, it's time for it's time for me to do it. I don't want to mess up. At first, it was beyond it was nerve wracking. You know, I was looking around before I went out there. You see, there was a lot more people than I thought it'd be. So, I mean, I'm just trying to do what I practice. Yeah. <laughs> oh. All right. All right. <laughs> it's too cold for me. I, I know. <laughs> I made it. I went a little high. I went a little high, but I just tried to avoid the ground. <laughs> to Mavs Pictionary, where we judge the player's artistic skills. I will name a category, and to my left, Wesley Matthews will have a chance to draw that category, and Yogi Ferrell will also draw it, and I will decide which one best accurately depicts the category that I name. Are you guys ready? Ready to go. Okay, you have 30 seconds to draw the Mavs logo, and go. Mm. I will say Wesley is taking more advantage of the time. <laughs> the buzzer has sounded. Wesley Matthews, please show us your drawing. And Yogi Ferrell, I'm not sure what that is. So I would have to say Wesley Matthews disappointed the, the, for that that's, that's not the logo. <laughs> That is not the, I tried to draw at least. Time, at what point in this was close to the At least try to draw a horse. <laughs> is that what that is? <laughs> <laughs> You don't get any points for attempting to draw a horse. But speaking of horses, you're asked to draw Champ, the Mavs mascot. And go. <laughs> and Wesley is moving pretty fast right now. Yogi's thinking this out. That looks like a <laughs> That does not look like a horse. We have 10 seconds. Oh my god. And the buzzer has sounded. <laughs> Okay, Wesley Matthews, he's drawing something similar to a horse head, and I'm not, that looks like a stick What figure. are you doing, bro? 
What's happening over there? I'm gonna have to give Wesley the point. That kind of looks like a. I mean, this ain't even fair anymore. Like, okay, really <laughs> maybe you're better with actual people than you are. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Stick to uh, Oh my god. Animals. Okay, so the third <coughs> category we have is Mark Cuban. And go. What? Mark Cuban. Keep in mind, this guy signs your checks, so you might want to do something pretty good for him, I would think. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> 10 seconds. <laughs> and the buzzer has sounded. Please reveal your drawings. Yes, sir. <laughs> We've got Matt Cuban. It looks like he is screaming. Yes, sir. Yeah, screaming on the right bench. here. And we have Mark Cuban, who's also screaming, that's a foul. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to keep this fair, so I'm going to give Yogi Ferrell this yes, one. Sir. It's nothing against West Drawing. I actually like that one. <laughs> but uh, I would say right now it's two to one, two to one. OK, the fourth category is the state of Texas. The state of Texas, which I'm proud to be from. So you, that you have 30 seconds to draw it out. I know you're Indiana guys, but you're going to have to draw this out. I already started my bad. GM. No, 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 no. <laughs> Five seconds. Wesley done. The buzzer has sounded. And we have what looks like the state of Texas, I would have to what say. What is that? Over here. Well, it's not but accurate to form, but it's pretty close. And then we have... It's all about the details, though. You know, you got to put the cities in there, where we are. You didn't put D-Town in there? Oh. <laughs> Is that 3 1? That was it's 3 to 1. There you go. Yeah. Well, the veteran wins it. We appreciate you guys joining us for All another the edition All the best. of Mavs. All the best. Look at that team. I need you to carry the, Mavs the poker chips. Appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs>esta semana los Celtics homenajearon a uno de sus últimos ídolos, el enorme Paul Pierce. The Trust fue reconocido por la franquicia que retiró para siempre el número 34. Grande, Paul. La verdad que lo tuyo está para las 10 mejores. Y hablando de eso, nos quedamos en Boston, que tenía al chico de las pizzas. Y aunque Isaiah ahora es de los Lakers, Terry Rozier las tira bastante bien. En la 9, Anthony Davis se mete con esta. Bueno, no, con eso imposible. Así que dásela de nuevo, que ahora sí. Toma. En la 8, una maxi aplanadora. Va, más que aplanadora, el alemán Clever es un tanque. En la 7, un agente con licencia para tapar. Mond. Draw Mond. Para vos, Daniel Craig. La 6 nos devuelve la alegría de los Circus Shots. Cortesía de Manuel Moody ahí, que saca ese doble de la galera. En la 5, ya todos saben lo que hace Mitchell. Ingles se la dio y Batum se corrió porque si no los aplasta a los dos. Correte, querido. En la 4 solo falta Angelina Jolie. El señor Smith tiene todas las armas en la polenta de su brazo. ¿Lo tenían ayer? Yo no. En el 3, Oladipo hace una volcada 360. Y si fuera el All-Star, se llevaría un 50 de puntaje. Muy buena, Víctor. En la 2, dejen de hablar de Simmons y Embiid. Acá estoy yo, dice Roberto Covington. Bestial. Y en la 1, dinamita, prende la mecha y explota. Gracia de ballet y potencia de arma nuclear para Russell Westbrook. Nos vamos hasta la próxima semana, pero antes te contamos a vos, arroba su ped, que te ganaste la Spalding de los San Antonio Spurs. En el programa que viene hay revancha para el resto y ganar la pelota oficial de la liga es más fácil que ganar el título jugando a los Warriors. Solo tenés que seguirnos, retuitearnos y usar el hashtag numeral generación NBA. ¡Nos vemos, amigos! 
Hasta la próxima. Like a stir fry. In the kitchen, wrist just like a stir fry.